Hi everyone, thank you for joining the Young Voices Skills Workshop number two. So the theme for today is assertiveness and confident communication. You can see my email address at the bottom. I'm Rachel, I'm presenting this workshop. I'm the participation lead for SEN and Disability in West Sussex County Council. And my role's all about supporting young people to get their voices heard. So the aims of this workshop is to understand what assertive communication looks like, to know the benefits of assertive communication, to understand the difference between behaving assertively, aggressively and passively, to think about communication with professionals and ways to get the best way out of working with them. So assertiveness is based on balance. When you're assertive, you are confident and you can get your point across firmly, fairly and with empathy. Aggressive communication is based on winning. You do what is in your own best interest without regard for the rights, feelings, needs of, and desires of other people, and you may come across as pushy or even bullying. You take what you want, often without asking. Passive communication can lead to not feeling respected or heard. It can affect your self-confidence and you can feel angry, frustrated and ignored. So the benefits of assertiveness. Self-confidence, you understand who you are and the value that you offer. Less stress and anxiety, you don't feel as upset if things don't go your way. You can make yourself heard and feel respected. So I like this visual here to explain different styles of behaviour and communication. I think it's very helpful. Um, so we can see here there's also a passive aggressive section which we'll come to in a moment. So up in the top left hand corner, uh, where it's talking about being assertive, it's about I take care of myself and I care about you as well. So you're looking for a win win outcome. So from any <clears throat> conversation you're having with other people, any interactions, you're looking for them to feel respected, for yourself to be respected and you come up with something that you're both happy with. Aggressive is underneath and that says, I care about myself, I don't care about you. So you win, you lose, sorry, and I win. So if somebody's being aggressive in the way that they're approaching you, then it's all about themselves and not about what you want. And it's about trying to get you to do what they want without listening to your views. Next to that is passive and passive, I don't care about myself, I care about you. I lose, you win. So that's when if you've ever been in a situation, and I'm sure lots of us have, uh, where you're finding it really hard to get your views across um, and, and actually you're sort of feeling like, oh, well, the other person probably knows what they're talking about more than I do. So I'll, I'll just sit back and let them get on with it. But what happens there is, is then you're, you are not looking after your own needs and what you need. And it's all about what the other person wants. So that's not going to work in terms of a win-win you're going to lose out and above that I lose and you lose so it both parties lose if you have a passive aggressive style of communicating and behavior going on so that's I don't care about myself and I don't care about you passive aggressive I think is often a little bit harder to define um, but I would say it's that kind of situation where someone's not being openly aggressive and openly pushy and bullying but there might be some quite subtle things going on that are actually undermining you and making you feel bad about the situation. I often feel like in a passive aggressive situation, that other person, um, they don't actually get their own way. Uh, but you and you don't get your way either. But everyone feels bad about the situation. Nobody's winning out of a passive aggressive situation. Um, so to give an example, that's where if somebody asked you to do something and and you didn't want to do it um, but if you were behaving in a passive aggressive way you might go and do it but sort of go oh you know and make a lot of fuss about it and go oh well I suppose I can I suppose I could do that but you know I am really busy but all right I'll do it for you and then that person's actually they've gone and done the thing that the person asked for um, but that person feels really bad for asking them because they've made it really obvious that they were far too busy to do it. Um, and the person who's gone and done it has also lost out by being passive aggressive. 
uh, because they actually didn't have enough time to do it. And if they'd have been assertive and said, I'm really sorry, I haven't got time to do that now. Um, can it be done a bit later? Then everyone would have got what they wanted. The task would have been done. Everyone would have feel OK about it. Um, and that would have been a much better outcome. So I like this visual here because it says um, it shows what it looks like, um, what sort of an animal um, you might be sort of relating to in terms of that sort of communication and what it sounds like. Now, this was um, intended for students in school, so some of it may not sound quite relevant, but I think the visuals um, and the examples are quite helpful. So they use a mouse as um, an example of passive communication and behaviour. It looks like lack of eye contact, looking down, not expressing your feelings or needs, avoiding problems. Um, now, the lack of eye contact one, I think, is an interesting one because for a lot of people on the autism spectrum, um, not making direct eye contact with people is part of how they normally communicate with other people and can be very uncomfortable for somebody on the spectrum to, to be forced to make that direct eye contact. Um, so there are ways around that um, and I will be sharing a link in a future workshop when we're looking at body language um, and speaking and body language, which um, is a link that I thought was very useful in clearly explaining ways around direct eye contact if, if that's a difficulty for you, um, but still maintaining being assertive. What it sounds like, I'm OK with whatever you want. People don't think about my feelings. It's fine. I don't want to get anyone into trouble. So it's that kind of reaction of, oh, oh, well, whatever. I don't mind. I don't mind. But actually, you know, people do have their own views and, and opinions and, and needs and wants. And it's how do you get those across assertively uh, so everyone feels OK about it and you feel like you're getting some of what you need. Aggressive communication and behaviour. They've got a tiger here as a, a classic animal that you might think of as aggressive. So what does it look like? Eye rolling, finger pointing, angry or forceful words, focused on your needs, rude or bossy. So there's quite a bit in there about body language of somebody that's being aggressive. And you know when people sometimes say, stop getting in my space, don't get right in my face, that's kind of aggressive body language. Um, and again, Judging distance and body language can be quite difficult for people on the spectrum. So it's something to think about um, your body language and other people's body language and can be extra tricky if you're on the spectrum. Um, but things like pointing your finger in someone's face is always seen as, as an aggressive kind of use of body language. What it sounds like. This is what we're doing. You can't play with me if you don't play this game. And all the statements begin with you. So there's a lot of that sort of blaming. If you've ever had an argument with somebody and they're being quite aggressive, it's like, well, you did this and you made me feel like this. And and it's all all the blame on the other person. Um, and and that's not helpful, obviously, for for resolving any situations. So assertive is the wise owl. And it's all about making eye contact. So it looks like making good eye contact, which, again, as we've said, could be difficult for some people on the spectrum. But it's finding ways around that, sometimes looking at the shoulder in the general direction of the person that is speaking um, is quite effective. You don't have to make direct eye contact. A calm but firm voice, respecting your rights and the rights of others. And it sounds like I don't want to do this. So in this instance, I don't want to play soccer. Do you want to play football instead? So I'm guessing this is an American example, American football. Um, but it's like, well, actually, I don't want to do this, um, but we could do this together. How about that? And it's trying to reach a compromise, something, a solution that both parties are happy with. And it's expressing your feelings honestly. So saying something like, I feel sad when you say I can't do that. And the statements begin with I. So it's owning how you feel owning your own thoughts and actions and being responsible for them. And that allows the other person to do the same. So to look at the next visual here, we've got different ways that people behave and communicate with each other. And for good working together and collaboration, um, which is up, up at the top here, um, how do we achieve that? So collaborating is what we're looking for. And a lot of the work that we do in the Young Voices group 
is all about collaborating and working together, both within us within our um, group as a team, but also with other people. Um, so sometimes with professionals from different services, um, sometimes <clears throat> working with some of the um, parent carers in the parent carer forum. So there's a lot of working together that we need to do. So, so how do we achieve that, that and be up in that red corner up there? So you can see in the central of that diagram is compromise. So that's that kind of negotiating something that works for everybody and a solution that everyone's okay with. So you might not get everything you want, but you'll get some of what you want and other people get some of what they want as well. So in order to reach that, what you need to have is you need to have assertive communication and behavior, but also cooperative. So you can see up in the top corner um, that if you have, if you're being assertive, but you're being quite competitive, um, then that comes into the uncooperative sort of section here. So you're still not quite getting to collaborative. Um, and so being cooperative is working really well with other people. So somebody who's being assertive, they might be quite effective in, in pushing something forward that they really believe in, that they think is really good, but they won't quite get a collaborative result with other people because perhaps some other people aren't quite managing to get their their views across maybe they're not as assertive and, and maybe it's there's not as much compromising going on down in the bottom corner would be where there's not assertive communication going on um, there's no cooperation going on and everyone's just avoiding the problem um, so nobody really wants to confront what any of the issues might be we're all we're all just going to avoid it um, on the other corner down the bottom we've got um, cooperative but not assertive and that's accommodating. So um, that's when someone's being so helpful um, that they're not really getting their views heard at all. So they're really good at accommodating what other people want and that's really cooperative in that way if they're really listening to the other person and, and being really helpful, but actually their ideas aren't, aren't really getting heard. So I liked this graphic of three ways to practice assertive communication because I like the fact that it's it's got some examples here um, and it gives it a little bit more context. If you want to find out more about it, um, I will be posting these slides on our wiki as a PowerPoint and then you can follow some of the web links. And this links to lifehopeandtruth.com, which is a blogging st uh, site and has some tips on communication styles. So it says, say what you mean. The hallmark of assertive communication is being open and honest with our thoughts, balanced by care and concern for the other person. So it is that bit of saying, actually, when you asked me to do that, I didn't really have enough time. And then I felt a bit worried about that. So I'm just letting you know, I probably won't get that done by Friday uh, because I've got lots of other things on. And I just want to be honest about that. Um, and then everybody knows where they stand then. Whereas if you said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll get it done straight away. And then you have to drop all the other things that you were doing. Um, that's no good for you. Um, or if you just turned around um, and said to them, well, of course, I can't do that. And that would come across as a bit aggressive. Um, then the other person just feels like, oh, well, I won't ask them next time because that was quite rude. So it's that balance, isn't it, of explaining um, your feelings and your thoughts on something. Reflect on your conversational status. So this is all about it being a balance. So assertive communicators self-monitor during the conversation to observe if respect is present on both sides. So it's that thing of thinking, am I being fair? Are they being fair? Is this conversation going well? Um, that can be quite a difficult thing to do, especially if it's something you're very passionate about. But I think it does it does help with assertive communication to think, is this a balanced conversation? Is everybody getting heard equally? Practice empathy often. Treat others in the way you would want to be treated, which is often called the golden rule. So it is that bit of, would I like it if somebody had expressed that to me in that way and said it in that way? Or would I maybe take that as a bit aggressive or or, you know, would I take that as a little bit rude? And it, it's monitoring that a little bit for yourself, which can be quite tricky to do. Um, so the next one um, is and there's a link there um, about where this comes from. Uh, but it's about uh, it's the link says building bridges through assertive communication. So it's like 
how how it can help to work with other people by communicating assertively. I like the bit at the top there, it says to describe the situation. If it's about someone's behaviour, focus on the behaviour and not the person. Now, you may have heard this before, um, and it's something that I often try and remember when I'm talking to people, that you might not the way like the way somebody's behaved, um, but it's not the person you don't like, it's their behaviour you don't like. And if you explain to them the behaviour that you didn't like, that gives them the opportunity to change that behaviour rather than them thinking, oh, well, you don't like me as a person, which is then really hard for that other person to hear, really hurtful for them. And they're not likely to listen to you then. Um, they're not likely to want to try and change that because they just feel like attacked. Uh, so, so, for example, if somebody got really passionate about something they were talking about and they raised their voice and they were maybe it was coming across to you as, as shouting and it was uncomfortable for you and you didn't like it. If you were to politely say to them, um, could you lower your voice a bit? That's quite uncomfortable for me. Um, then that's kind of describing to them how you'd like them to change their behaviour. That's not going, oh, you're always shouting. I hate it when you shout because that makes it much more personal to them. That It makes them feel, oh, do they think I'm an aggressive person? And they, they might be upset about that. Express your feelings about the situation. Do this calmly and use I statements like I feel or I think which is something we've discussed before. So there's the describing it, then expressing it and owning it yourself and saying, this is how I feel, this is what I think. Specify, what would you like to happen? So it's always that thing of trying to offer a bit of a solution to it. So saying, um, well, I didn't like it when you said that because it sounded like you were shouting at me. Um, but actually, if if you could maybe just lower your voice a little bit, I find that a little bit easier for me. So you're kind of being really specific feedback of, of what would make things better. And then the outcome is what do you want to get out of it? What wants, what needs to happen? What needs to change? Um, and what would you like the result to be? And being clear about that. I've put in a little bit here about talking to professionals. This was something I picked up on a workshop that I went to that was talking about parents in meetings with professionals and I thought it'd be really useful to share with you as young people. So as young people you will probably have quite a lot of meetings with professionals like doctors, teachers, psychologists, all different people um, throughout your life um, in your personal life but we also have meetings with professionals as part of Young Voices and, and it's worth sort of reflecting on that for a minute I think. So Remember, you are the expert on your own life experiences. So I think to be assertive in our communication, it's it's valuing yourself. It's that bit I said earlier about what value do you have? And your value that you have is you have lived your life and you know about your own life experiences. And that's what often we're sharing when we're talking to professionals. And you have a valuable perspective to give. Remember that professionals come with their own experiences. Um, and that was something that came out of this workshop um, about parents in professional meetings. And, and I found that really helpful to think about because actually they have to work within their own professional boundaries, a lot of professionals, but they might actually have a lot of sympathy for the things that you're finding difficult because they might have been through that with a family member or themselves in using services. Um, so it's just to remember that, that actually they may be more sympathetic than perhaps you think they are sometimes. Most professionals want to do a good job and you can help them to their job even better by telling them what works and what doesn't. Now, sometimes, I mean, we'd all like all our meetings um, with other people to be really positive, um, have really positive outcomes. But sometimes we do end up in a really tricky conversation. So that can happen in a meeting with professionals. That could happen when you're talking to your friends or family members. Um, and there were some tips um, that, again, came from a workshop that was for parent carers that I thought were really, really useful here. So the first point is, is if you don't understand something, ask if they can explain it in a different way or using less jargon. It's absolutely OK to say because people often don't realise they are doing it um, and they're dropping in words. And you think, what on earth does that mean? It's totally right to say I didn't understand that word. And also sometimes that you didn't quite get what they meant it's fine to ask for clarification. 
If they say something that brings up difficult feelings or you find upsetting, you could say, for example, it sounded to me like you were dismissing my worries. Did I get that right? And then that gives them the chance to correct it and acknowledge your feelings. So they may have said something and and you perhaps you thought, oh, well, that sounded like they weren't really listening to me. And I don't think they really got what I actually meant. And I'm feeling a bit upset about that. I think if you're really clear about that, then that gives them the chance to say, oh, no, that isn't actually what I meant to say. I'm really sorry it felt like that to you. This is what I meant to say. And then you go away from that conversation feeling a lot better about it and not having unresolved things that were worries in the meeting that the other person didn't know were worries. Now, it does take quite a lot of confidence to do that, but it is really helpful if you can. Um, because otherwise, I'm sure we've all been um, in a conversation with someone and then afterwards you think, I didn't really like what they said then and I wish I'd challenged it. I wish I'd said something back to them. Um, and that's a really effective way of doing that in the conversation is just reflecting it back to them and say, this is what I heard you say. Is that what you meant to say? And then that helps to clarify it before the meeting or the conversation has finished. Um, and this is also often about having those more difficult and tricky conversations. Don't be afraid to say this is very difficult for me to talk about. Most people will respect you for being honest about that. So there might be some bits of life experience um, in personal meetings with professionals or within the group um, that you find quite difficult. And it's it's OK to have those boundaries and to say that. Do ask for time out if you need it. That's the assertive thing to do if you know you need a breathing space. Um, and that's something that is sometimes tricky to do if your feelings are, are getting quite high and you're feeling quite stressed or worried or upset about something. But it's definitely the best thing to do sometimes is to just say, could I just have five minutes? Because people really won't mind. Um, do use any techniques you know that help you to stay calm, such as breathing exercise, stress toys, stretching, listening to music. Um, and I know some people carry around a bag like a toolkit with things in that help to relax them when they're stressed. A lot of those are often sensory things. Smells can be a really good sort of shortcut to, to relaxation because your sense of smell is very powerful. Um, so it might be worth thinking about the sort of stuff that you carry around with you in your bag when you go places, if you're going to a meeting that, you know, might be stressful. Um, so, for example, I always carry like a roll on. Um, with like an aromatherapy smell in it that I find really relaxing if I know I'm going to have um, like a stressful journey somewhere um, and I might feel the need to use that maybe on the way and um, so it's maybe thinking about some of those things and a bit of forward planning sometimes so if there's some activities you wanted to, if you wanted to sort of follow this up and do some activities yourself um, <clears throat> there is a really good pack of activities to try. Some of them are in a group context, um, but some of them you could just try yourself at home um, and, and see what you make of them at home. Um, so do follow this link and take a look at some of those activities. It's a PDF that you can download um, and you could maybe even try some at home with friends and family members. Thank you so much for taking the time to look at this presentation. Um, I will be doing workshop three very soon. Thank you very much.